So let, let's have a look uh, at things in practice, okay? Mm -hmm. So I found, I found this a bit challenging, uh, but at, at the same time, very interesting. And there's more to see. So for now, um, we see a first part, okay? Um, uh, because then from variable importance and all the other things from uh, section 5.8 onwards, uh, we might need another session. Yeah. Okay. If, if we want to understand and so revisit the things quite uh, probably. Okay, so I loaded these two um, these two libraries. This is for the data, as you know, and this is the tidyverse. And then we load uh, tidy models. We don't even need to load tidyverse if we load tidy models because the things that we need are already inside the. the we okay. can even uh, run again all the things because it, it won't take uh, much long uh, for for um, uh, fitting the model, and then I show you why because you know I, I had to find a turnaround. Okay, so mm -hmm. this is the same thing. Uh, we load the data, uh, and this is what we know already so these are the data this is the the raw names and these are the different types okay so with the values mm -hmm. uh, then there is a second uh, data set the patients and uh, um, uh, so this one here can be used to link the two data sets so we can yeah right yep. so what we like is to predict the uh, GIMP and no GIMP, which is this. So we are uh, looking at, I didn't put any, uh, let, let me see if I, because I, uh, so basically we want to predict the, uh, the, 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 there is this cancer uh, that afflict the brain, and uh, there is uh, like um, uh, very few chance to survive, and you might die very suddenly in about a year. So the purpose is to uh, attempt to identify some uh, genes that mm -hmm. are connected. You might know better than me, so I'm just repeating this thing. Um, uh, basically, we, we attempt to predict this uh, if this uh, type of genes are uh, uh, which are uh, believed to be connected with this type of cancer uh, are within uh, the um, these people that are affected of this um, of this of this. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so basically, this is the uh, the things that you did it, I, um, uh, and then so here is explained a bit better. So anyway, uh, let's go forward. So we have these two data sets to be linked to each other, uh, and then uh, uh, we use this subtype as a response variable. Okay. Uh, first things that we do. Uh, in the patient uh, data set, we transform this to row names to column. So basically we put, this is the original one and these are uh, row names. So we put the row names to be a column. So then we link, I did it like that. There's many other, there might be other, other ways. So right. then uh, what uh, uh, I uh, kept this way to do the thing, so I, we transpose the data set. This is not the patients, but the other one with the... Um, the methylation mark, yeah. The, say it again? The, gene, the um, gene expression levels. Yeah, the gene expression uh, data set. So we do transpose this data set in a way that uh, uh, now we we got the things this way, 
Okay, you cannot actually see it, but we, we will see later. So basically, yeah. what was uh, as a row name now is a, a column name. So we have a huge uh, data set, which is quite uh, a few observation and lots of predictors. Okay, so this is the case that might be because it's the reason because it's challenging. Okay, yeah. what what we do now uh, is um, like try to subset uh, this uh, this data set to um, run a model which is a sample model. Okay, so we are not working on the whole data set, but we are working on a sample data set, and the observation will be selected based on the standard deviation. Okay, so we basically apply um, on uh, um, uh, the, the uh, standard deviation to all the observations and then we order them decreasing uh, in decreasing order. So okay. this way, the, uh, um, we um, this is the tidy diverse way to do the things, uh, and then having done that, okay, what we've got is these things here, okay. So this is the result, and this is uh, um, the um, index, okay. They are the indexes that we are going to use for extrapolating the rows, so the observation that are interested in. So uh, we select the first thousand okay. of this one. So we right. have a sample uh, of 10,000 observation uh, ordered by the uh, highest standard deviation. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, basically, so we select the first thousand and then let's run this. And then in our original data set that we transposed, we select just these numbers, which are the indexes numbers of the data set. So the, the row names, the row numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that yeah. Okay. Okay. No, no I'll, I'll go back. So basically, we transpose our original data set. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then from this one here, we calculated the standard deviation mm -hmm. applied on the observations and then ordered in decreasing order. So uh, from the highest to the lowest. Then we uh, uh, slice it the first thousand. So we, we grab just the first thousand rows. Okay. So, and now what we got is um, the, this number here, which are the indexes, like, like this one uh, here on a side. Okay. Just that this, this one inside are the indexes of our that we use uh, for our original data set. So we are going to grab this uh, observation number. So if I, if I have this, uh, this is my original data set, okay? If I want uh, just the first one, okay, I do one. This is my first row. Okay, okay for each. It's very each. long, no? Okay. Yeah. It, that's, oh. Uh, the, the first column, sorry, the first column, okay? No, uh, because these are, these are the rows and these are the columns. So now I'm selecting a certain number of columns which have uh, um, these indexes, okay? Which are this one here. So column 6938 colon 3904 colon okay. yeah 
Yeah, yeah, okay. So picking the top predictors, not the row names. It's the top predictors based off of. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Okay, thanks. Okay, now uh, it's all uh, messed up. Okay, right. So now, what's happened? Uh, this is our new data set, and we have just a thousand uh, uh, observations. Okay, uh, because then we trans we 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 transform it as a data frame, and to do that, as th this one here, I, I think I might need to go faster because I'm I'm losing time doing. Uh, this thing is a matrix. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to transform this as a data frame, it doesn't work if you use just data frame. So you need to use as data frame matrix, and then it works. Okay. So this is the result. Then what you need to do is to uh, pass the row name to colon. Okay, this is the result. So it's now mm -hmm. more readable. Okay, so you have everything uh, organized. Uh, okay. These are the row names, and we put them uh, as in a, to be a column of the data frame, named patients, just as the same as our patients uh, things that we want to uh, link uh, to. Okay. And then we join, left join, the patients data, data frame by the patient. Okay, so first thing we, uh pass the the row name to colon and we name it patients and then we left to join the patient data frame so now patients it's a, mm -hmm. it's a colon and then we left to join the patient data frame as a in a way that so okay it'll classify if it's the cancer or the not cancer that phenotype or not yeah so now or we have the subtype which is our response variable inside a data, uh, our data set with all the information that we need. Uh, and there you go. Okay. Yeah. So this is uh, just the add. So the first six observations, but we've got a thousand two uh, columns. Okay. Yeah. So this is a, a, the, the, the dimension is now 184 observation and 1,002 uh, columns. OK. Uh, yeah. So I load tidy models. Mm -hmm. And then. This is, super, by the way, this is like very, very clear explanation. So thank you so much. OK. Uh, so I load tidy models. Tidy models, uh, in tidy models, you split the data with this function, initial split. This okay. is from tidy models. Okay, I sent the seed because it's uh, like a random split uh, mm -hmm. so for reproducibility. So, in a way that if you want to uh, do it again, you can uh, retrieve the same result. So, you use initial split on the data. Uh, stratified by subtype, and then the uh, proportion of training is 70%, the proportion of testing is 30%. I've used the same proportion uh, used in the, in the chapter. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. okay. So we run this. Uh, I didn't mention that to from the split. You can uh, retrieve the training set doing training split and the testing set doing testing split. Okay. okay. So now we have a split, a training, and a testing set. Okay. It, it study models. Next step is uh, pre processing. Okay. Pre processing is using uh, the uh, re recipe. Uh, package and we do a recipe uh, which is like you have the formula that you like to use and then add some step functions this is a, like a language okay so that you use uh, as the same as study tidyverse and everything but you basically 
um, uh, tidy your data uh, appropriately for to be ready for modeling okay okay so we used this recipe function to set up the formula just as, as it was formula and then you put the formula and then you use the formula inside the model okay but in addition we add some steps and these are the steps functions let's um let's have a look like for example this one here which is the same that has been used uh, uh, as an example in uh, in the chapter no if i do mm -hmm. this uh, this is step uh, zero variance known zero variance um in the in the chapter they mentioned that if there's a like uh, some some um, predictors which have no much variance okay that won't be very useful in the in the in the model so this step will be helpful in case there's any uh, of this uh, situation within the predictors to um, eliminate like it's a selection it's a step selection okay so okay. we we use this and then i go back to this update role we use this uh, to all numeric uh, predictors and then we do step normalize which like uh, standardize uh, scaling and centering uh, all predictors in a way that uh, if they have different uh, units okay they uh, are now or homogeneous and they can be used by the model without uh, um, basically it reduces computational time the only thing yeah. that then then we uh, do a, a further step selection with step core so basically we set a threshold of 90 percent and we eliminate we select out all the predictors they have a correlation greater than 90 percent right right because you remove one clearly related exactly okay so then um i this one uh, i added afterwards because there was something wrong and i didn't uh, get it properly uh, the thing is that uh, the patients, um, this, this column here, this is not a predictor because this is an ID column. And uh, if you don't specify the role of this column to the, to the model, the model uh, uses it as a numbers. So it, it, like it gets stuck and attempts to um, get some uh, information out, get some information out of this column, which is not, uh, which is, which can't be done basically. This, this is a, it's just a list of numbers from one to the, the, the 1002, no, uh, sorry, 184. So they are different patients. So. Uh, I had to basically update the role of this uh, uh, column to be an ID. So in a way that it is not a predictor, but it is an ID column. So basically all, uh, it, it stays there, but the model doesn't use it. Okay. okay. Right, so this is our recipe. Uh, mm -hmm. If I run it, uh, it looks like that. So there is an ID, uh, an outcome, and some predictors. Okay. Uh, to see what is it, we need to use these two functions in conjunction prep and then juice. Or uh, instead of juice, you can use uh, bake uh and new data uh, null okay that that's two options but i did that just to show you what uh the data set look like looks like after pre-processing so after we have done these things we can see how we modified the data where is it okay now 
uh, we don't have, so I, as you see, you can see the dimensions. So it's true that we are using a training uh, set. So the number of uh, patients, so the observations are just the 70%. So now uh, we've got 128 instead of 184, okay? But then uh, we had a thousand predictors. Now we have uh, filtered them for some reason, for correlation, for zero variance, for uh, what, uh, what was the other one? For, uh, and that's it. And so now we've got eight, uh, one, two. So 812 predictors instead of a thousand. So just to reduce okay. it up. Okay, to, to the most right. useful one. Right. Okay, we apply a K nearest neighbor uh, model. Okay, I'll show you something. When you load tidy models, okay, mm -hmm. tidy models provide an add-in. Add um, can you see it? This, this, uh, this thing there? Hold on, I got my uh, screen needs to go out because it's at the very top. Yeah, okay, Adams. Okay, I see it now. Okay, uh, let me. It was on my, my Zoom screen. It was like saying it was sharing your screen. So I couldn't see the very top of your screen. Okay. But I can... Okay. If I, if I type here, pars, uh, parsnip, pars, uh, sorry, but, uh, it, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, parsnip, parsnip. Yeah. okay the uh, package one of the packages inside the model so okay. uh, it provides this add ins which is generate parsnip model specification if i click on it it allows me to uh, uh, select a type of model can you see it mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay yeah if i type here k and n and type classification uh, you see there is one so i click on it and then uh, i put myself uh, somewhere in the in the script okay, okay. Uh, if, like if i do this and then uh, i click the screen bar write specification code and it's um, basically release uh, the model specification that I want. Okay. okay. I do pan, so it goes away, my dog. Okay. Sorry about that. Oh. Okay, so uh, now I, I get a read of, uh, of this one because uh, I've already done it. Uh, so as you can see, uh, this is the nearest neighbor model. And okay. we specify five neighbors and uh, like uh, a weight function uh, to be as a triangular. I'm not going into what is a KNN uh, model uh, for, because we haven't got time, but maybe, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure that th this is just to, to show the way how to use study model. Yeah. Um, so then uh, you need to set the engine, K, K, N, N, and then set the mode, which is classification, okay? If the, the first time you, you might don't remember how to do that, so you can use the add in. Uh, okay, what we do next is to fit, just to, to see what's happening. Okay, so we have our model specification, which is this, with these parameters. We fit by subtype, so we, we set the formula. We are not using uh, our. Uh, um, pre-processing data still because uh, mm -hmm. 
would like to see what's happened without any preprocessing part. Okay, so we fit the model. Okay. Um, yeah. What happened here? Okay. Is it? Let, uh, let, let, I don't know what happened. Okay. Let's go forward. So then uh, this one should work. Okay, let, let's let's uh, see that this is subtype other training. What does it say? Mod function. Mod function. Okay, the, the, le, let's go forward because but anyway, then you yeah. do uh, predict the fit on the training function uh, and then bind calls uh, type um, in a way that you basically extrapolate the prediction and then put it back in the data frame to see it. Uh, as you can mm -hmm. see, uh, there is a prediction class uh, dot prediction class fun uh, colon with the uh, with the prediction then there is the the probability because we specified prob uh, okay. for both for cmp and non cmp okay and this is uh, the original uh, then uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I did um, the uh, calculation of the um, rock, um, uh, the, the area under the curve, and it's one. So basically, the model is perfect, okay? But... Uh, okay. So this is not good because we are my uh, overfitting uh, this this model. Okay, so we need to do something else as well. Mm -hmm. If I do accuracy, uh, it's one as well. So it's a bit too much perfect. Okay, yeah. that's that's not what we want. So uh, maybe some cross validation uh, can be helpful. So what we do is again setting the seed and uh, um, doing some cross-validation and we use this function default cb to the cross-validation and uh, uh, with five folds because it's faster so basically we run this and as you can see you have some uh, new splits uh, mm -hmm. we have analysis the assessment and the total for for each one then what's happened is that uh, we are going back to um, tidy models and we use a workflow okay the workflow function it's basically a way that it is useful when you uh, um, uh, basically are trying different models okay so basically here uh, we we try the uh, we are using just the uh, KNN and yeah. to, to assemble those this information we use the workflow function add the model and add formula okay we are still not using the recipe okay because otherwise we could use add recipe we do that later but uh, okay. to see what's happened here so basically we do a simple workflow with a formula and we are still not doing any pre-processing. So it's all filing. Okay. 
okay so this is our simple workflow and it's this you can see uh, all the things it's a workflow um, okay okay so now what's happened here is that uh, um again um it uh, as we have done we can do this and then we we can fit the resamples but um basically we obtain the same results so we need to do some pre-processing steps so instead of adding a formula in the workflow and uh, we add a recipe our recipe so our uh, what we've done uh, before no? okay and uh, so we do the workflow the recipe and the model mm -hmm. and this is our workflow with three processing things then we set up some parallel processing this is with mac i don't know if you got mac of windows but uh, the, with Mac, you do, you do the, just this. We do parallel, okay. we do parallel. Uh, then we need to set this function control resamples because uh, this will go inside the model uh, function. Uh, and it's uh, basically saying to the model that I like to retrieve the prediction because otherwise the model runs the things, you can uh, extrapolate the metrics, but then you haven't got any prediction. So you need to put this uh, uh, extra argument. So we do the control with the control resample, saving the thread, and then we fit the resamples, basically on uh, using the false and the control. Do you have any questions maybe yeah so the the reset essentially to me this appears to be that you are taking the the training data and you're even splitting that training data again to better fit the k nearest neighbors okay. is that what was done that's because up top when it um could you go up a little more please let's see it was um before the this the analysis assessed total with the fold split um the fold split was that when you were also splitting the training data even further to assess how well the training model data was being fit do you mean here yes okay basically this is the uh, cross validation uh, that means that we take the training set. Uh, uh, this this can be done even uh, at the top when you do the split, and then you do the cross validation, and then you put it there. But uh, you use the training simply because uh, mm, the, it's a, it's a great question because um, when you do pre-processing and you do some step selection. You might change no, your data as you haven't seen, as you mm -hmm. have seen the, um, the data has, is slightly changed. But um, the cross validation is done on the training set. So basically the cross validation is providing um, shuffle data from your original data. And you, you keep the test set on a side until the end to do not touch mm -hmm. it, to use them uh, as a new data, no? to test your model, right. uh, the goodness of your model. So forget about the test. So the training is now your data. And to do cross validation, and that means that you shuffle your data uh, and grab some sample sizes um, from, from the training set. Okay, and you divide this training set in an analysis, assessment, sets. So basically, when you run the model using the, this uh, folds, what, um, what it does is going to use the analysis, so this 102, mm -hmm. and then 
tested on the on this 26 and say the result. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. um, uh, I, um, the 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 model um, it, it's here. So basically, our workflow, which is this. Okay, so the recipe, mm -hmm. our data, and the model, okay, have been fitted with resamples, which are our folds. Okay, and then there is okay. this control because it's like uh, an option that says, I need a prediction. Okay, so this is a... Uh Okay, so yeah, this is um, to retrieve the prediction. So mm -hmm. the model uh, is done. Uh, we can see the metrics. Uh, we uh, obtain an accuracy of 87, about 87 percent, mm -hmm. with a standard error uh, of two and uh, an area under the curve of 96%. So slightly lower, before it was one one, so 100%. Right. So now it's a bit more like reasonable, but we are still not uh, like satisfied. Okay. Let's see the prediction. We now got some predictions. As you can see, uh, we have the um, probability uh, for CMP and no CMP, uh, the, the, the values and everything, okay, in our, uh, and a different models. So basically this has been run five times. We have five folds, okay, and these are the model. Any okay. time. Uh, is, uh, okay, with different data. Uh, we see the, the confusion matrix, and this is a bit confusing because data have been stand, uh, normalized. So now mm -hmm. you, you have these values which are like slightly different from the chapter right. because the values are uh, normalized but we we make it better we can even see um like a, a mosaic so a plot to see mainly what's happening so basically this is the a first result so what is done good and what is done uh, not good so basically mm -hmm. this is a good uh, prediction so a larger area has been get it got it right uh, and very little part is not so now we do even a rock curve to do the rock curve can you see yes uh, this is quite similar um, about what is in the in the chapter to do that you collect the prediction and then use this function rock curve this, uh, you need to specify the truth column and uh, this dot pred. One of the two, basically you use uh, this one here, you use the probability uh, that the, the, the CMP will be found. One of the mm -hmm. two, you use this, this one here. And as you can see, if I do, uh, run just this bit here with the rock curve what i obtain is the threshold the specificity and the sensitivity i'm 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 boy <laughs> no 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 you're fine it's good i just i'm still waking up in the morning but this is really very fast okay yeah this is so, good this is good uh okay so basically uh, I, uh, I found if i do rock curve I found specificity and sensi sensitivity and then i can use them inside a ggplot uh, syntax using one minus specificity and sensitivity okay, okay. and so 
also to retrieve uh, the rock cube. Okay. So this is a, our uh, second attempt uh, with the pre-processing steps, and uh, it's like a bit more satisfying, but it is not exactly what we want. So we go a, a bit forward, and we can tune the upper parameters. Mm -hmm. So that means when I do K and N, I have some different parameters, hyper parameters, the number of neighbors, the wave function and the distant uh, power, this power. So to tune these values, these other parameters, in the models you use the tune. Um, before we specify uh, to be, we set them like here, to be five and we use the triangular, okay? Now we tune them. Yeah. Okay. So, what is it? Okay. We put tune, tune, tune. Uh, and this is our uh, new uh, model specification. We make a new workflow with a new model specification. So, workflow tuning. And then now, to tune this value, we need a grid. Okay, so we use the grid regular uh, and we tune, we make a grid of this value. So we basically extrapolate some numbers that can be uh, used inside as a possible candidate. So we use the grid. If you want to see what is this grid, look, what does it look like? You see, you have a, a list of different neighbor, number neighbors. Um, with functions and this power. So right. then so you're just yeah. testing combinations together. Exactly. Yeah. There's other options that you can use. You can do, you, you can cross them. You can use grid. There's different options. So we now try this first step. And then what's happened to use these numbers and try them? in the model, we need to use, instead of fit the samples that we used before, before we use our workflow and fit the samples, right? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Right. Now we use tune grid, because we are uh, basically fitting the resamples, but we are tuning as well, okay? Yeah. So the function to use is tune grid. And we have our poles as before, mm -hmm. the, our cross-validation poles. And now we have the grid, which is this grid here. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So now we're going to, instead of doing just the one model, we're doing everything, everything together. And then we can pick the best one of all of the different model combinations that have been tested. Right. Yeah. Let's Run this. Just a bit of practice uh, um, using the um, often uh, it's uh, beneficial because um, it's a sort of language. So once you get to practice, uh, it's very useful because then, right. for, for example, if we like to use more than one type of a different, different type of models, you can use like a workflow set instead mm -hmm. of a simple workflow, you have a workflow set and then you put a list of different models, a list of different recipes, and then you run all, all together. And then it extrapolates the best one. Okay, okay. Okay, this is uh, like um, very useful if you are not sure the type of model you like to use. Got it, got it. To be able to, okay, you've got your data and you need to figure out what's going to be the best way to model your data. You can put it through, make a recipe and put, make workflows and then test which one's going to be the best and then actually use that to, um, do the analysis on a data set. 
basically exactly the same as this, but there's a like slightly different function. Like instead of workflow, you use a workflow set in which contains each workflow for each. Uh, yeah, but it's mm -hmm. like set up like a list, uh, so you you have all the things. It uh, apparently right. takes a bit, but uh, what's happened is that, uh, for example, in the chapter, they mentioned another. Uh, you, you might have like uh, missing data. So you might want to impute your data. And then at that point, you can use step, uh, other step selection functions like step impute K and N or step impute me median. Or so th th there's, a, uh, th there's different, ma many different uh, uh, imputation steps. Uh, they use even like little models uh, for imputing uh, missing mm -hmm. values that you can use. Uh, here, uh, it takes a bit, so let's, let's go forward. Uh, basically, the best uh, that we found, so one, one we got the result, uh, you can use show best and it lists the result. And he uses the this um, so the the best for accuracy, okay, for accuracy is mm -hmm. neighbors and this uh, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, a a, a, a of function weight function. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is done. That is done. Okay. Done. So I. Run show best. So as you can see, uh, this is uh, uh, ordered by the best of accuracy. Okay, but I can even order it by the lowest standard error for the mean of the uh, uh, the matrix. So that okay. um, yeah, basically, if I put this uh, um, inside a visualization. You can see that uh, the number of neighbors here, like uh, uh, five or ten, release the same result. Right. So uh, you can use five, uh, and if you go, um, um, it, it doesn't change basically much the number of neighbors from five to ten. So you can you can just use five. Five is good. Right. Okay. But this is not uh, what the book uh, shows because he, they, they did it differently. So they did a list of number of uh, KNN neighbors and then uh, like a smoother to see what's happening. So, right, right. Yeah. If we do, uh, we, uh, here it's shown uh, like with a standard error, with the, um, and as you can see, the best with the lowest. Uh, no, this is the, yeah, the smallest and or yeah. the highest. Okay, this, this is ending. Okay. Yeah. So the lowest standard error is again this one. Yeah. So yeah, okay. okay. So how now? Now that I've got all this this option. How can I do to select just the best model and put it inside a workflow and then fit it again on my test test set? To do that, I use this select best. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you can see, it selects just one model. Instead of show show best, this is select best. So I have just one model. But there is okay. uh, even another function, which is select by percent of loss, mm -hmm. which is, they, they are the same. You can use this or you can use that. It, it depends by your um, like uh, strategy, what, okay. what is best for your data. So right. you can use like select, select by percent of loss. And what it does, uh, you put this inside a finalized workflow. So you go back to your workflow tuning. Instead mm -hmm. of 
uh, let, let's go back here. This is our workflow tuning, and we do we did tune grid, okay? Mm -hmm. We tune grid for uh, fitting all these this different models with different uh, other parameters. Now that we have chosen our best parameters, which are this one here, okay? Five neighbors, the wave function, etc. We like to to fit our workflow on this model, on just on these parameters, okay? So we finalize the workflow. Right. Um, on this uh, thing, let, let me change what's happening. No, because that was selected, maybe this is slightly different. Exactly. So, Selecting by percent loss, this is slightly different. The, the wave function is this, uh, and uh, he said it's better with 10 neighbors. So we use this and then use last fit on the split. Okay. Okay, and that'll give you the final um, model prediction on the split data. Yeah, so here we got the, our results. So the accuracy is 90, uh, it's, it's better. Mm -hmm. And the area under the curve is uh, fantastic. So it's done. Okay. Yeah, so this is yeah. the result. Uh, the, the metrics are this one here. And we can even, again, do the same as, uh, things as we, as we did before. Uh, and we have this rock curve. But I think it's, we are overfitting, don't you think, a bit? Yeah. Yeah? Right. I th yeah, this is good because, so this is just getting the data ready and then you've now picked the model and you've done this on the training data and you know that it works. And then you then will take this particular 10 years neighbor model with um, the 10 years, 10 neighbors and then that, um, that particular weight method and then you take that and apply that to the test data exactly. to see how well it actually, um, how accurately and how specific sensitive it is on the test data that you already have labeled. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now uh, what, what I done here is to try to, with different K neighbors, but, uh, with more chance, so I want to try like from one to ten. You need to set to to run a model for for each one. Okay. Okay. So uh, basically, I repeat this step: tuning, tuning, tuning. Uh, workflow the same tuning as before, but now what's happened here that uh, I set the parameters. Okay. So I set the neighbors to be from one to 50. So I want to try all the neighbors from one to 50. Okay. To do this, uh, in my tuning uh, workflow, I need to extract the parameters. And there's mm -hmm. different function that you can use. Um, but you can use this extract parameter set yields I don't need to run uh, the things again because it's all the same. So as you can see, you you have this plus plus plus. So the parameters are there. It's all good. Okay. You now I now would like to update the neighbors to be from one to fifty. I'm not interested in uh, uh, tuning. Okay, the but I. Uh, specify that the number of neighbors need to be from one to 50. Okay. Okay. So I run this. And that, that's again the same thing, but it's updated because okay. the neighbor. That, okay. So now um, I use this. This is, uh, I found this on the tidy models um, book and Teddy Models um, website. 
uh, within one of the case study presented there, this grid max entropy makes the difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's have a look. Basically, what does is space filling parameters grid. So it's experimental design for computer experiments. So basically, uh, I'm not doing a simple grid, but I'm doing all the possible grids within my other uh, other specifications. Okay. The max as possible, all crossing, all things, all okay, all the things that it, that it took. So I use this, uh, uh, and I do this for uh, a set of size 10 i found this on uh, I, but i think it's reasonable and and um, it's fine so i i run this thing and you can uh, see what is it so basically now again it's a grid but it's a bit more like uh, varied specific yeah yeah okay then again we do the two grid but now uh, we use this grid here the last one this one with the, the max entropy okay let's run this model um results are where show best Okay, I think I've touched it. So, in the meantime, it run uh, yep. basically now. Okay, so the result is this the uh, I collect the matrix. And I have some different matrix. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's still not done. But what uh, um, basically happened here is that. Uh, uh, I made a couple of plots to see uh, the number of with the number of neighbors and the standard error, which is not the uh, the the um, model error because I should have done one minus the accuracy. Okay. Right. Right. The, yeah, the error rate. Uh, I've used the standard error. I've done some tries. Then with this auto plot, uh, there is um, something. Uh, so it, it worked fine. So I, I'd like to show you this uh, as soon as it's finished. Then, um, because I didn't put the control inside this uh, tune grid function, I don't know, didn't have the prediction. So I had to run that again with this control thing to retrieve the predictions because I didn't add this inside the tune grid. It's not that it's not needed, that I didn't put it. Okay. So then I did it again with this control, the control resample to save the prediction. And there you go. This is a nice rock cube. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot to get to this point. <laughs> So this is so, nice. 
Go ahead. Uh, okay, it's, um, it's finished, but it's now I, I should run it again. Basically, just I like to show you this, these two plots. Okay. okay, this one I did it with the standard deviation uh, of the mean accuracy. And as you can see, uh, this is a smoother. These are the number of neighbors. Mm -hmm. From 0 to 40, exactly, they were 50. And this is the trend of the uh, of the number of neighbors. So if I do one, uh, let, let me see, show best. OK. So the mean, OK. If I do this one minus the mean, Well, anyway, why this one here is nice. Mm. You do the auto plot function, and it shows you, then you can add the smoothers, the titles, and all the things. So you just basically, on the, rest of the workflow grid search result, you use the auto plot, and it releases some information, like the accuracy, and the area under the curve. Um, here you have this uh, nearest neighbors, and here this uh, the distance. In this yeah. case, uh, Minkowski is the best one. Okay. Order. Do the highest accuracy, um, like the the first point on the Minkowski gives you the highest accuracy, but also the highest area under the curve. Yeah. I, um, yeah. I, I, can, I can show you some things with this. Yeah. Uh, basically, there is something on top, but it is not showing this up. I don't know why. So basically, there is a the legend legend position is wrong. So let's put it down. Oh, it's five past the hour. But basically, as you can see here, the uh, this color these these colored points are the different type of weighting functions. Okay, so uh, basically, if you use a different weighting function, you have uh, you might need a different type of uh, different number of neighbors. Um, and well, you, it, that, then uh, I share this um, in a script. So basically, then I run it again, and finally. Uh, made the rock cube. This is done. It's all uh, there's a bit more because I've tried to do the, the other things, but we haven't got time. So that's okay. Yeah. This is amazing. This is I mean like I feel like the next book club I need to do now is tiny models so I can like really Hi, get yeah. into this. Yeah, but this is because I, I I rarely work in base R in terms of my like how I process data and do things like that to so be able to see this in a tidy fashion, even though I don't fully understand it, but just the way that it's written, like what you do, it just makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's more intuitive, I should say. I mean, like the base makes sense too. It's just to me, this is a cleaner way to do it. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Um, I guess for next week, do you, um, I can finish out the chapter um, five with the base. Yeah, yeah. Base R. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll um, I'll get that for next week. <laughs> okay, great. Oh, next okay. week. Uh, are we? Are we? Um, uh, are we? Do we meet next week? Yeah. So next week is our last meeting for December. Okay. Um, 
and then the for the holidays we'll have the 26th and the 30th um we're not meeting um i have um i'm going to be doing my field work in january i don't know if i'm going to be able to make the sixth yet but i definitely will not be able to make the 13th um because i'm flying out that day um but we can discuss this next week but i i may not be able to be available um on those days, I can at the very least try to get some slides, you know, or have the notebook, the shared slides I think um, updated. It, yeah. Don't know okay. there. So, uh, see you next week. Yeah, sounds good. Thank All you. Right. Bye. Bye.